everybody. This is Neil Fanner. I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology message. This time for January 23rd until January 31st, 2022. This is where I talk about celestial energy. The soup we're all swimming on, we're all swimming in all zodiac signs and how it affects us and how to better cope with everything that's happening. I want to start at the 23rd with the Mercury Kazemi. It's like a new moon in regards to Mercury. It's a time that Mercury and the Sun, the King, meet. It's a time of planting and seeding of ideas. And it was a time that the ancients always did ceremonies and try to visualize where they want to see themselves in three months, where they want to see their surroundings in three months, where they want to see themselves socially in three months. And it's, as I said, a time of seeding. So whatever you seed now may play on in the future cycle of Mercury throughout these next three months. It's the center point of the retrograde. That means we have another half a retrograde in front of us. And we can do that those ceremonies through the 22nd, the 23rd, or the 24th. It's a time that to really take, a t take time to think about where you want to go and how you want to get there uh, in social terms and career terms because all through this time Venus is approaching an exact approaching not exact but approaching an exact trine with Uranus so it's an amazing time to update your social circle to update your relationships to update how you satisfy yourself and get satisfaction through your life and of course value money how you provide yourself with money throughout this whole period, this whole uh, week ahead. So these matters intervene with the Mercury retrograde in Kazemi and come up to the surface as well. The 23rd itself is a good day to take things ahead. Uh, and of course, you have to remember we are in a Mercury retrograde. So as astrologers or people listening to astrology, we already know that the timetable could change, that agreements could change, that uh, decisions could be uh, fluttered or, uh, you know, um, maybe postponed. And already understanding that communication may be uh, 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 troubled or, or you know, uh, not as clear in, as in uh, regular days. And that gives us a total difference in how we approach things and how easy we can take it when things do change, when things do get postponed, because we come from a total different emotional preparation. We already are much more prepared for this time and for those changes. And that's the beauty about astrology, that it prepares us for the time ahead. So the 24th is a good day for physical activity with the moon sextiling Mars. It's a good day to charge your head, but it's not such a good day for communication as there's a square from the moon to Mercury. And that means careful with how you say things. Uh, the 25th could be a day of fast changes with the moon opposing Uranus and squaring the sun. However, it is a good day to involve yourself in going outside to nature or doing something ph philosophical that actually recharges you as there is a, a sextile to uh, Venus and a trine to Jupiter the same day. It's not a good day in, in career terms as there is a square to Saturn. So watch from clashes with authority figures in your life. The 26th, very creative, very spiritual, very artistic in its sense. A moon trine, uh, Neptune, sextile Mercury. Wonderful for inspiration, wonderful for being with people you love and doing something you enjoy. The 27th, Watch from exaggeration, the moon squares Jupiter, sextiles the sun, sextiles Saturn, which will give us much more discipline through the day, but at the end, squares Neptune. And that totally dissolves our resolutions <laughs> and borders sometimes. It is a day also that the sun is exactly sextiling Chiron, really intensifying the feeling that we could heal ourselves through relationships 
with people we love. We can do it. We can heal ourselves together. Uh, Mercury is also conjunct Pluto, which brings a much more transformative, therapeutic, psychological aspect to everything. It's a great time to reveal a um, hidden part of ourselves and indeed revelations, unveilings and, and, and epiphanies could be also on the global and social level and you know uh, in the media and such. And as I said, the Venus trine Uranus isn't perfect, but it's still there all through this time. So again, wonderful time for an update and an upgrade in your social circles and how you provide yourself with money and satisfaction throughout your life. The 29th, a day to step away from your emotion and be more reflective of it. The moon is conjunct Mars and it's a day with a lot of energy and a lot of flexibility. And as it progresses and the moon approaches Venus, it becomes a calmer, more satisfying day. The moon is, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, the sun is squaring Uranus a day afterwards on the 30th. And we could feel it throughout the week, but that's the most intense day. And it's a, a time of rapid updates and instability and an understanding that we need to update the relationship we have with what we do and how we do things, the relationship we have with our children. Maybe they're grown up. Maybe they are playing a different part than they did before or our parents. It's, it works from the generation above us, the generation beneath us. And it works for how we do things and how we make our impact on others, how we actually self-realize ourselves. It could also impact how we play throughout romances and love. As the sun touches these subjects as well, it's a good time to watch your blood pressure <laughs> and not get, uh, uh, you know, too angry too fast. The 31st, uh, is a new moon and we're going to talk about that new moon in the next video already as I said before in the video before I wanted to simplify things for you so January 23rd Mercury Kazemi Venus trine Uranus same for January 24th by January 28th we could feel the Mercury conjunct Pluto a lot and by January 30 we could feel the Sun squaring Uranus and even before that the Sun squaring Uranus so these are the impacts for the week as for next week we're going to have Venus conjunct Mars square in Chiron much more impactful challenging approach in the sky and we're going to talk about that with the new moon so my my suggestion is take the time to renovate update and change your life this week be flexible be light about things and enjoy the breath of fresh air and taking yourself where you've never taken yourself before because from next week onwards things are going to become a bit more demanding. I want to remind you that there are Zoom lessons with me all the time. There's 20% off because of co the last COVID uh, wave and there's readings with me online all the time, 20% off as well. Of course, you could reach me through the details at the slide at the end. I want to thank you for sharing this and commenting on this as it exposes this to more people. This is Nia Fire saying, may we all live long and prosper. Amen.